Here's how the home page before you works. ASP.NET MVC is a UI technology based on the model, view, controller, design pattern. In the MVC pattern, you separate your UI code into distinct components. You have models, you have views, and you have controllers. The models contain the data to display and some associated logic. The controllers are responsible for receiving a request and figuring out what to do. They often build a model and then they select a view to display that model. The view then is responsible only for taking the model from the controller and producing the HTML that you see in the browser. Each component has distinct responsibilities in MVC, so you don't have all the code jumbled together and becoming difficult to work with. When I make a request from this browser, like to localhost 9027, the runtime will go looking for a controller to process this request. And in MVC, that is part of the routing logic. Routing is something that's configured during the start of an application. In an ASP.NET, that means it happens inside of a special method named application start that lives in a special file called global.asax.cs. There's all sorts of configuration happening in here, but it's broken out into different classes. There is bundling configuration, which we'll talk about in the optimization module, and filtering configuration and routing configuration. There's a call to a method called register routes. This class, route config, and its method, register routes, lives in a folder, app underscore start. Inside of here, you'll see all sorts of configuration classes. And this is a little bit different than what it was in MVC3, where we had all of the configuration jammed into the global.asax.cs file. Now all of that configuration code is inside of classes that are in the app start folder, and we just call into them during the application start event. Let me open up the route config file, and we can see that there are two routes inside of here that are defined. One is for web API controllers. We'll talk about that in another module. And then there's the route known as the default route. What a route specifies is a pattern for the runtime to match against an incoming URL. So if a request arrives for what you see in this comment here, slash department, slash detail, slash three, the runtime knows to pick that apart and to look, go looking for the department controller and then invoke the detail action on that controller. We'll talk about actions here in just a bit and possibly pass along an identifier as three. So pass along a piece of data to that controller action that tells it, hey, the, the ID you're looking for is three. There's also some defaults specified for each route. So if a part of this URL is missing, the MVC runtime can substitute values. For example, if the ID didn't exist here, and we just had a request for slash department slash detail, that's okay. The ID is optional. It might show up as null in our controller action. If we don't specify an action in the URL, then the controller knows that it just needs to go looking for the department controller, but then the default action is index. So invoke the index action on the department controller. And if a request arrives for the root of the application, we have enough defaults to plug in values for everything there too. The controller will be the home controller, the action will be the index action, and the ID is still optional. And what that means is if I go back to the browser where this is running, I can make a request to slash home, that arrives at the home page, and I can make a request to slash index, and that arrives at the same page, and that's all because the defaults were slash home slash index. If I try to go somewhere that doesn't exist, like slash foo, and there is no foo controller, I get back an HTTP 404 message. That could also happen if I look at the controller. So all of the controllers for ASP.NET MVC are in the controllers folder by default. They don't have to live here. You can put them in any folder. You can even put them in a different project. But if I open this up and comment out the home controller and then do a build, the home controller no longer exists. So if I refresh slash home slash index, we should also get a 404 message. It doesn't exist. Essentially, that's the runtime telling you that it cannot find something to process this request. Let me show you a little more about how this works. Let's say we did want to respond to a request for slash home slash say hello. Currently, of course, that returns a 404 error. That means I would need a home controller. So let's flip back into our homecontroller.cs file and write a public class that is the 
home controller. So literally, the controller name starts with the word home, and it needs to derive from a base class provided by ASP.NET MVC, the controller base class. There's also an interface at a very low level you can derive from, but the controller base class is good enough for what we want to do. Now the action part of the URL, say hello gets parsed into the action, that will literally be a method name that the runtime goes and looks for. So I could create a say hello method, in other words, a say hello action. And just by having that in place, if I do a build and I refresh the browser, we should no longer get a 404 error, but we get a blank page because that say hello action isn't doing anything. I could have the say hello action do something, like return a string, just return a string, hello world. A little bit off on the capitalization, but that's okay if I do a build now and refresh. I should see the text say hello. And there's no HTML involved, there's no JavaScript, CSS, it's literally all we sent back from the server is just the text hello world that shows up in the browser just fine. But what you typically do in a controller is you put together some sort of model by querying a database or querying something on the file system, putting together a model and handing it off to a view. At this point in time, we're not dealing with any models just yet. I've uncommented the home controller. You can see all we do in the index action is just set a message in this property called view bag and say return view. View bag is one way to tunnel information from a controller into a view. Every view has access to view bag. It can pull out things like the message. We'll see that in just a second. Return view is just a fancy way of saying, the next thing that I want to do is I want you, dear MVC runtime, to render a view for me. But which view? It's going to be what we call the conventional view for this particular controller action. In every ASP.NET MVC project, you will have a views folder. By default, that is where your views live. If you have a home controller, then the default view for the index action of the home controller will be a view that lives in the home folder under views and it's called index. So you can see there's a naming convention in play. If I were to rename this as index two or index three, the MVC runtime wouldn't be able to find it unless I went in and explicitly told it, well, the view that you should use is index three. But in this case, I'm really just want the default view, which is the index view. I could specify it explicitly there. By putting everything back together like this, we should be able to get the home page that we saw earlier again. Of course, I need to remove the say hello part so that we go to the index action. And there's our home page. Let's look at this view. This view under the views folder consists of most of the HTML that you see there on the screen. And you can see that it includes a view bag title, view bag message. The title was actually set up here. This is a Razor view. It has a CSHTML extension. Razor views are just a way to intermingle HTML markup and C sharp code. Wherever you see an at sign, that is usually the beginning of a C sharp expression. Of course, you can also have literal at signs. If you escape it, that would be displaying at view bag, that title literally in the browser, but we want it to display the result of evaluating the C sharp expression, which is to display view bag that title. You can see it's really quite clever about knowing when you have C sharp code and then transitioning back into markup mode. In fact, view bag dot title, this extra dot here would normally be a compiler error if that was in a C sharp file. But in Razor, it's smart enough to figure out that, well, that doesn't make sense as an expression. You must literally want to display a period here after the title. So Razor's pretty sharp about that. And you might be wondering, well, all of the HTML that I see here is not entirely indicative of what I'm seeing on the home page. For instance, there's no register link, there's no login link. Where does all that stuff come from? That comes from a layout template that is also a razor view that's part of this MVC application by default, and that is in the shared folder. Any view that you put in the shared folder is available to all controllers anywhere. And this is typically where you find the layout view. It's the layout view that defines the head tag, the body tag. It 
it's the layout view that is rendering those links in the menu at the top of the page, the home link, the about link, the contact link. And it is the place where you call render body in this view where index.cshtml will appear. When your home controller says render the index view, then everything that you see inside of here that's not in a section will be rendered when the layout view calls render body. The sections will be rendered at the point where that particular section is rendered in the layout view. So when this says, please render the section called featured, then in the index view, there will be a section featured that contains the markup that gets placed at that location. Ultimately, what I'd like to do is just is to display a list of departments on this home page to allow users to start viewing departments and adding employees to departments. So let's just call this the department manager page. And I'm going to delete all of the other markup that was inside of here. And if I refresh the browser, we should see those changes reflected here. Now my index view just shows the markup department manager Everything else that you see here, the copyright, the obligatory link to Facebook and Twitter, those are all part of the layout view. I could go into the layout view and change that stuff too. But now you've seen that we have a controller that responds to slash home slash index or just slash home or just slash to the root of the URL. It's not putting together a model yet. We don't need this viewbag.message anymore. And it's rendering what we call the conventional view, which is the view that has the same name as this action on the controller. So the index action of the home controller. And what I'd like to do next is have this index action get a list of all the departments that are going to be in my database and hand that off to the view so that the view can display the departments in a list here. And to do that, we'll need to get set up with a database.